Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial on Vue. In this tutorial, I'm going to expand off of the clumping and fast population options found in the ecosystem inside well the ecosystem editor inside of Vue Extreme 2014. So, um, I already put together this landscape and a few materials just so it looks a little bit better and not so boring. Um, it's nothing special. I just put a couple minutes into it. Uh, it doesn't look the greatest. So I'll just go right into here. And I made this, I put on the grass variations material that ships with the view because this is where I want to uh, put my trees is where this material is uh, at. So I'm going to make a ecosystem out of this material and this ecosystem should inherit inherent the same options that I have in uh, the environment tab here so if you look at these settings and then look at the grass variations right here and go to presence uh, it's the same thing so the presence is the same as the um, environment tab so when I go in here and I load up a tree just say for instance that blue spruce again when I populate this it should populate where only that material is at. So, yes, I want to create this. And it should populate these trees. They're really tiny, and it's growing everywhere where those uh, where that material is at. So, and I can see it right here. I can you, know, you can see I'm populating in. Um, so I'm going to go to density, and I'm going to enable the clumping, just like we did before. And so now here might be a drawback of using the fast population mode is you enable that and you make it one change and then you're waiting for view to populate it again automatically and you might not want that so what you'll do is you know you just go back in here and disable it so that might be a drawback of the fast population mode however it still seems relatively quick uh, in this regard so I'll just you know keep it. it only takes a couple seconds for it to populate almost 11 million trees so it's pretty decent. I'll go back to the density tab and I will increase the size to maybe 60 meters and I'll keep the amount at 75 percent and again it's gonna pop up asking me if I really want to do that I'm just gonna hit yes and then it will populate that and while I'm at it I'm going to save my scene always save don't ever not save so to test this out when it's done saving, let's go ahead and do a preview render and we'll see how the clumping works and whether or not it's looking good and is feasible in an actual production. Pretty sure it is because you know it wouldn't be included if it wasn't you know worth your time. So let's see how it looks. So it's not growing everywhere on that material because I do have a large um, a large amount of fuzziness to the material so it would come further down so maybe what I'll do is um, I'll just let the material take over the entire terrain except for certain um, slopes like right here and right here um, so I'll just get rid of this third material which was supposed to be sand and dirt that I just kinda threw in there but whatever um, I was going to use this to populate rocks on it, but I didn't, so we'll just delete that. And let's go here to um, let it populate its ecosystem again. And we'll just have it affect the entire terrain, but only at these certain slopes. And let's delete this one because it's not going to have the same options here. Well, actually, before we delete it, Let's look and see, yeah, so all we have to do is just take that down. And again, you're waiting after you make that one change. So again, that drawback comes comes in. So for the time being, I'll just do that. There we go. And it's going to populate under the water. I don't, uh, geez, okay. Two there that's about where the dirt was at so it should just populate in this area right here so go ahead and populate that and we'll see what happens 
I wish, uh, in a way, V was smart enough to say, oh, that's water, I don't want to populate under that. And I'm pretty sure there is, probably by relative to C. You probably hit that, and probably fix that. I haven't played around with those options. Out of all the years I've used Vue, I've probably only played with a couple of these, just by playing around. So maybe I'll make another video on what these do. Hint, hint. Future. It does seem like it's taking a lot longer to populate without that fast ecosystem population mode. So now you can really see the benefits coming in. So many trade-offs in 3D. You have so many different trade-offs. You can either do something relatively quickly, but it's annoying, or you can do something very slowly, but more accurate. All of that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and enable fast population mode. And we'll let view do its thing. And I'm just going to make sure that they all align accurately. And then uh, you can already see the clumping taking an effect here. So we'll uh, do one more render and we'll see what it's like. And again, don't judge me on how this image looks. I didn't spend any time on the terrain. I could have made the terrain in view and exported it into World Machine, eroded it, imported it back in, and it would look amazing, but I didn't do that. So, okay. So it's only growing where that material's at, that's what I want. It's not growing underneath the water, that's good. And it also looks like it's clumping, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So you can see the clumping happening here and here and here. You can see those open areas. So this just gives it a lot more of a natural, um, a lot more of a natural populated uh, scene than just the regular just populate everywhere. And if you were really good, with using view, you could have used the uh, um, variable density fractal, which you would probably get more control over than if you were to do this. Uh, but this still looks really good, and from a distance, you can really see that that clumping occurring. So let's increase the settings a little bit more. Something a little bit more crazy. So under density. Let's take the size and increase that to maybe 70 meters. Let view do its thing. Um, yes. And let's change the amount to about 85% as well. So that's it's higher than what we had at default. And uh, you can still see the instances are relatively decent and we're getting some good results. Again, I can limit the amount where it uh, grows on top of the mountain, like over here. I might not want it to grow there, but I'm going to let it grow there anyways. So let's go ahead and do a preview render and we'll just see what those changes were. This is going to be it's going to be great. I really like this this feature. I've always always wanted a feature like this inside of view where you can you know, let view do the clumping for you rather than having a fractal do everything because fractals can take so long to render out. And this looks like it's using a, 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 an actual fractal. However, it might just be using an algorithm like a like a smart math or something where it's doing justice for us as artists or me as, you know, not so much an artist but more of an, an instructor kind of dude, I guess. Now you can really see that clumping happening right here, so it just looks really good. Nice flat areas. Um, not very many trees are growing there. Some are, but not very many. And you know, you still have some right here, and it just looks really good. So it reminds me of home. Um, so I'm gonna do a a full a final render here. And it looks like Vue actually got really fast at rendering out populations. Um, ecosystems. It seemed like it would take forever to render out an ecosystem, uh, but now it actually seems like it's relatively quick. So they did a lot of major enhancements. Okay, so it's done, and now you can really see the good quality in the clumping here. Uh, already, this you know these this this clumping option already makes it look a lot more natural because now you have trees growing randomly in areas where you know there might not be as much sunlight or uh, anything like that where it's hard for a tree to grow. However, 
With that said, there isn't a whole lot of control here either. You probably get more control if you were to use an actual density fractal over the clumping, but the clumping seems relatively uh, decent for you know a fast option that you can go to. So like maybe if you're putting together something together for your boss <clears throat> or the your project manager or something was like, hey, I need some trees in in there, and I need them fast. And you're like, okay, bam, done. You don't have to spend you know an hour, you know, thirty minutes, or you know more than five minutes. Uh, trying to get the trees to clump together like this in a natural way. So this this looks good. I like I like this a lot. And just so you're wondering, this terrain is eight kilometers by um, it's squared. Uh, so this is about how big you'll get the trees to be if the uh, terrain was eight kilometers in size. So this is about it, uh, which is a a good size. They seem like the right size. So. Uh, with that said, I am really interested in turning the scene into something awesome because I don't want this to be a really short video where you guys just are like, oh, well, you know, he's showing me something from the last video, but on a, you know, a larger scale. So let's actually turn this into a good looking scene. So we have our natural clumping trees here, and we know we have some little outlying trees here that I might not want in there later. So let's go ahead and play with the material a bit. I want this material to be a little bit larger. Uh, I'm going to turn off that fast ecosystem population stuff so I can just do this faster. Um, I want the scale to be, you know, let's try 10. And since this is an 8 kilometer terrain, we can click on this little cube here and this will change our preview options. We can check it to be a terrain and then we can check the object size and it has it in tens here, ones and tens, so you can't choose eight and you can't put in your own size, which is very frustrating. Um, however, I can go to the next best one, which is eight kilometers. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me a better representation of what my material is going to look like at 10 kilometers um, on a terrain. And it has these little uh, options here. We can see the rock and the underlying material and the actual material I'm working on. So at the scale of 10 at 10 kilometers, this does look a little bit too small still, so I'll go to 20. We're almost there though, actually. Um, and then you just let it update. And there it is, updated. And the scale seems still a little bit too small, so let's, let's go something crazy like 100. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get enough variation between the uh, grass, the green grass, and the yellow grass. And it might be the best way to actually see this is in an actual preview render. And we don't have to populate our trees because they're already populated, so this should be really quick. Just a preview render. And then we'll work on the material under the water because you don't want grass growing under the water. That's a little bit ridiculous. I'm sure it does happen in some places where, you know, there's a lot of grass, but I mean, it's really tall, thick grass at that point. So, um, the material is way too bright, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> too vivid, uh, too vivid of, of a color. We need it to be a little bit more dull and not as bright. So we can go and change that. So let's do that just real quick. And th these are not good looking mountains by any means. I could probably go in here and crush it like this. I'm going to have to change almost everything that I worked on, but that's okay. Let's make sure we get the water back in there. And your ecosystem will follow your terrain, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it just takes a minute for it to update. That's the good thing about a dynamic or a populated ecosystem is that if you use the population option, then when view populates it, it'll follow the terrain. And you don't have to randomly or manually place things around anymore. So we'll call that good. Let's see. Now you're going to really be able to see the different uh, clumping options here. We may need to repopulate just for accuracy reasons. So I'll do that anyways. But first I'm going to change the material. So I'm going to change this to be more down here and right there. Probably more on the yellow-brown side. 
call that good. Maybe it blends in with the rock a little bit too much. So we'll go back over towards the green. There we go. And um, I should make that look a little bit better. This preview window is slow to render sometimes. The new version of View in 2015, apparently this preview window is almost you know, instant compared to this. So that's always nice. Let's go in here and let's fast populate and uh, we'll change the clumping. We don't want it to be 100. We want it to be, what did we have it before? 75 and 85 or something like that. We'll just change it to 80 and we'll change the amount to 90 after it does its thing obviously there we go and we'll probably have to go in here and do the uh, accurately align option so that they actually align to the terrain they're, the way they're supposed to be so we'll do that views thinking about it there it goes so it did properly align um, and the trees look like they need to grow more towards here but um, let's just uh, play with the camera a bit and see what we can get going so this is a very expansive landscape um, so that's we have to play with the atmosphere as well Let's go here and we'll lower uh, where they'll grow so that they grow more of an area. Um, you can set the preview color for the um, ecosystem as well. So let's just lower these down to maybe four and let it populate. Another good thing about the uh, the clumping option is that um, it lessens the amount of trees that you actually have in your scene. Uh, but from what I've seen, because whereas your your every single open area right here, there would just be trees, and it would be useless because it doesn't even look right to begin with. Um, and then second of all, um, it takes forever to render, so it helps you with your um, realism as well as keeping things on down low we need to change the atmosphere so I'm gonna use some of my pre-made ones that I like to use this is my default one we'll see what this looks like I typically use this in all of my scenes when I'm setting them up because it's fast to render and it also looks really good Let's bring this out and put it right there. Okay, so it's really low in the atmosphere. So we're gonna get like this dusk look, which you know that could look good. Just we don't want it, unfortunately. We'll raise it up a bit more. There we go. Now that would be more like late afternoon, perhaps early evening, late afternoon. <clears throat> um, and the trees, let's go ahead and do another preview render. Okay, just so you guys didn't have to go through all the pain and suffering of test after test after test, I decided to just do it while not recording and uh, this is what I came up with. So I'll just show you what I did. I actually copied the first terrain and made a second one out here. Um, and you can see it just way out there. So, and I adjusted the atmosphere a little bit. And inside the terrain, I put in the brown sand. I, I'm not, you can't see it now because I'm not around the water. I decided not to render out the water. Um, but I made some adjustments to this. So what I did is I changed the presence to be almost all the way around. This is uh, right above the water line. So that's why it's there instead of all the way down. This is right above it in case I did want to render around the water. 
Um, then I just change the slope to 65 degrees so it would appear in more areas uh, and more on, on more slopey areas. And I also made it dynamic so that when I render it's not rendering out the entire uh, landscape or populating the entire landscape and when I render I'm not having to use up all those resources for things that aren't even inside the camera. So that's a nice addition. Uh, dynamic population has always been there. Uh, I'm just saying that it was nice to have that checked anyways. Um, same thing with this second uh, landscape. It's not rendering, populating anything past this point uh, from the camera. So you have all of this, but you can't really see any populations there. So as the camera moves closer, those populations will start popping in, or those trees will stop start popping in. And you can see here the clumping is that's going on. Um, I want to change the clumping though. So on this terrain, I'm going to go back to here and go to density, and I'm going to change the amount of clumping to about 95%, and um, we'll render those out. And I find that just clicking on any of these sliders just once, not really moving it, but just clicking on it, will kick view into, um, or view into actually populating those. Sometimes it has a hard time after you change things. Might be a bug, might not be, not 100% sure. Um, so there we go. Now when we render out, the dynamic population will set in and we'll be able to see our population. So let's go ahead and do a quick preview render. And then I'll work on the atmosphere a little bit more because it's not perfect. It does give us a, quite a bit of a draw distance from where the camera's at all the way to the other end, uh, but just not enough going on. It's just very plain and dull. So just like what a uh, default atmosphere should be, de should be doing. All right. So now I got the clumping how I want it to be nice big open areas here's some rock from my underlying material and this brownish material is actually green uh, but it's the grass built-in grass material um, I'm not really working on the materials too much because I just wanted to show you the trees and then actually turn this into something that might look decent uh, in the end if I spent some time on it but there's that so let's go ahead and look at the atmosphere so I have an aerial perspective of 1.53 that's good God rays is checked, volumetric sunlight, I like all that. Um, let's go look at clouds and let's add a cloud layer. So like this big cumulus cloud layer, we'll add this. And I don't like the defaults of the cloud layer, uh, mainly because the clouds are a little bit too dense. I like them to be a little less dense. Uh, even 100% is still a bit much. However, if you look at this preview window when it decides to kick in, um, they don't look very dense right now. Uh, sometimes when you render out the density, you can, or when you render out the scene, you can actually really see the density kick in. Um, I'll just keep it right here for now, but I'm going to lower the shadow density because I don't want there to be too much shadow, and I'll turn up the ambient lighting. That might help with. Um, getting the clouds look a bit more like less dense clouds anyways so now it's not uber boring um, and I'll just move the Sun to be a little bit more behind these clouds coming out from these clouds a little bit and maybe not so late in the day and let's just see what the preview window has to show Nice, nice. You can still get the distance. Some really dark shadows, though, from the sun right here. Um, so we need to go and play with those. I'm actually going to move this more behind this cloud, actually. And off to the side. There we go. I don't like the sun being directly in my render. That's just a personal thing. No, no reason, really. Just more of a personal thing. And so let's go and look at these. Uh, I'm no wonder it's really dark. The light balance is more towards sunlight rather than ambient, so I'm going to lower this to like maybe 83. And now let's see what that looks like. And this might help bring out the green that's in our grass as well. 
There's only one way to find out. Yes, yes, it does. Brings out a little bit of that green in our grass, and I'm also going to turn up the sky dome lighting gain to about three, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so that's it's a little bit better ambient light going on now than what was before. So I'm just going to turn this back up to maybe 87%. And that'll make it so the shadows are still dark, but not too dark, and will be golden, hopefully. This little preview window is very helpful. Yes, I do like the shadows more now. Okay, so let's look at the aerial perspective. Let's turn that up to two, just so those mountains look further away. But we'll see how that affects this foreground and midground a bit more. I, I want the mountains to still be visible, but I don't want them to be super visible, if you know what I mean. I want them to be looking like they're further away. Um, and that two might be too much. And looking at it, 1.5 might have been too much. So let's just go with almost one. And we'll see what it looks like. These should still be pretty sharp and crisp, um, but it should be like around this area is when they start fading out and you can't see these very well. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay, I can see it right here a little bit. So it is a little bit more um, not so hazy right there. Let's do a preview render. Okay, so yeah, I do like where the uh, haze is cutting off at. So like around this area is where it starts coming in a little bit more and fading out towards the distance that way. So that looks good, and the clumping still looks good. The grass material is not that great. Um, too many clouds. Uh, so I want to limit those clouds to a cloud zone, and I have a video for that as well. Um, before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and save this. It's always good to save. Uh, also, one more thing I want to show you is if you ever are confused on where is what in a scene, you could always go into your procedural train right here, and if you check the... Uh, these are the materials that we're using and the different and where the trees are applying. If you check this box right here, this is default, uh, but if you check this, it'll show you where your populations are uh, on this terrain or on your entire scene. And there's a way you can move this uh, anchor point. I just haven't figured it out just yet. Uh, there are a few uh, bugs with it, however. As you can see, this back gray area, the closer you get to some areas, the, it starts fading out the distance. Uh, but now you can really see the scale of your scene in these trees, and you can see how they're being affected by the, the clumping. So I just wanted to show you guys that as well, in case you guys never played around with that. Um, and obviously this big blotch of brown, which I'm assuming is a material, just this is more like the material options. Um, so I'm not sure what this is, probably just another glitch in it, but uh, you can really see the clumping going on, so that's good. Just wanted to show you guys that. It doesn't really do anything other than allows you to see where's what. Um, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and go to this big cumulus and let's limit it to a cloud zone. And let's move this cloud zone. Oops. Let's move this cloud zone. It would stop being weird. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, we'll just do it right here. And if you guys want to know uh, what cloud zones do or how to use them, you can go ahead and watch the video. It's a pretty in-depth video, so you should be able to learn something from it. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. You can really see how that cloud is just grouping together. That's it's ridiculous. Let's see what it looks like in the uh, preview window. Probably just a big pillar of clouds. Any day now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a big pillar of clouds. Uh, let's decrease that in size. Bring this down. And we probably want to... Stretch it out a bit. 
and now what we want to do is click on this and what this will do is it'll allow us to expand the zone so the cloud will fill in that area more and let's bring this down we have to change it back to this and let's make it more thin and let's bring it down over the terrain a little bit or all the way and it looks like it's trying to roll right over those hills that's it's kind of like what I'm looking for. Okay, so let's move it further inwards. So it's coming over those hills. I kind of want it to be covering them like a storm's brewing. Um, then we'll turn the fall off up a bit. And we'll do the same thing. And we can do that by Control C, Control V. Oops, wrong thing to copy. We want it to do it with the cloud. We should be able to do it. Apparently not. So we'll just go back into the atmosphere settings and just add another cloud layer. Same one. There. Same settings as well. So um, what we did is we lowered the shadow density, or what I did, and turned up the ambient lighting. Just want to make them sure they're the same and I just turned the density down to 100 and apparently this one's scale is set to 8.5 so they're gonna be a little bit different because of the way they spawn and the fractal that makes them so I'm not going to get them exactly and we'll limit this one to a cloud zone Let's increase the size and let's move this one over here. And again, same thing, just make it big and kind of put it towards the edge here. And let's just change the size to be about the same. There we go. <clears throat> now we have clouds there and clouds in the uh, in the distance. This one needs to be more over. Here. I want the clouds to kind of merge with the camera over here. And we have clouds in the back. Let's turn up the fall off. There we go. And um, what else could we do here? Let's add another cloud layer. And this time we'll just add a regular layer, pretty much the same settings. Um, but this one will just keep going throughout the entire scene, but we'll just make them small. So like, like this, perhaps. Let's see what those look like. Yeah, and we'll just change the cover so they're not all over the place. They're there, but not all over the place. So. And apparently I took too much away, so let's turn that back up. Okay, starting to creep in a little bit there. There we go. Okay, so we'll just uh, keep these settings. I don't know how good it's going to look until we do a final render, so I guess we will find out. Let's save first, and I will start a final render. Okay, and render. Okay, so I took out the clouds and just added these layers because, well, first of all, they were taking forever to the render, and second, because they just looked horrible. They still looked like giant pillars, and so I took them out. But anyways, this is the final result, and I quite like it, so I'll just save it. And uh, I'm going to save it as a TIFF, and I'm going to make sure that I have it set to 16 bits. I'm not going to use any compression. It's okay. And I'll just... You know, I'll just keep it untitled, save it. So, this final result, I like it. Hopefully you can find uses for it. If you like this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, go ahead and visit my website at www.pwndesign.com for more information and resources. And I hope to see you, uh, you know, comment and whatnot on the next video. Thank you, and have a nice day.